Gifford Arms in Victoria Street, Wolverhampton, a number of ghosts are believed to haunt the pub. <coughs> One of the spirits is believed to be Anne Haunton, whose ghost has been reportedly seen following young men back from the pub at night. She's said to have been a pros... I don't think I can say the word... who took her own life on the site in the early 20th century. The pub was built in 1922, but the Gifford family had owned the house on the site prior to that. There have been other sightings of a girl aged around 11 who is often seen playing with wood bricks in the main bar in the middle seat by the back window. She's also reported to have been seen in the doorway in the kitchen of the upstairs flat. Another sighting is of a man who's believed to be an old landlord named John who's seen locking up the pub at night. He walks right through the actual bar area as if it wasn't there, when it, as if it was there when he had the pub. There have been many reports about a dog haunting the pub. Over the years, there have been stories of ghosts moving and exploding, um, of glasses moving and exploding for no apparent reason. Cold spots in certain places in the pub, doors closing, strange noises and smells. Uh, the most haunted part of the building is said to be the oak panelled dark room. So cold because the windows have various stained glass bearing the Giffard family's association with the site. Several members of the staff have refused to go into the room unless there is somebody else with them. Uh, the Cuban Exchange, formerly the Exchange Vaults, dates back to at least 1866. <coughs> and was known for attracting the clientele of military captains and low-life criminals. The exchange vaults is said to house a lively set of ghosts, with history extending back to the First and Second World Wars. A South Staffordshire Regiment captain and a sailor from the Second World War both reportedly causes, caused disturbances. Captain Roger Tart told regulars to save a seat in the corner of the bar at the exchange vaults before leaving for frontline duty. He never returned, and now the fateful, of the corn, of, of the bar, fateful corner of the bar is said to ex experience extreme temperature drops. Another said to haunt the venue is Second World War sailor Andrew Bezik. The state sailor had an affair with a local lady, and her husband, a very jealous and violent man, finally found out. Bezik's ghost is said to haunt the pub. Strange occurrences are reported by staff throughout the building. Lights flicker. The cellar is said to be plagued with electrical faults and even though the wiring is sound, a bar stools get moved around in the bar and cellar and staff have even reported having heard their names called out. One member of staff, Darren, was in the cellar on, changing, on, on his own, changing a barrel and turned around to find a bar stall had been sail silently placed right behind him, blocking his way out. The Billy Wright pub has been a public house since 1818 and over the course of that time earned itself a tale or two. The building has been known under num various names, including the Feline and Firkin, the Dog and Greyhound, and is now known as the Billy Wright, the famous Shropshire footballer. Between 2001 and 2011, when it reopened as the Billy Wright, the pub was said to be constantly open and closing up the different identities. A member of Her Majesty's uh, Constabulary, at the time Queen Victoria, is said to haunt the premises. He is an old-fashioned policeman in ornate uniform. When the Victorian officer is seen, it's always in the main bar area. And he's said to be look out for the other reported ghost, a local villain of the same time period, known as Jack the Hat. Victorian times in certain areas of Wolverhampton and notorious public houses were rife with prostitution and criminal goings-on. Whilst nothing is known of the Hat's crimes, it's believed they must have been terrible enough, as they are pursued even beyond death. 
Uh, Madame Clark's is a Georgian Grade Two listed building, has a colourful past. Despite originating in the 18th century, the present building is mainly 19th century. It's a watering hole, but doubled up as a brothel run by Madame Clark herself. Stories have materialised over the years of gentlemen who did not want to be seen entering or leaving the building, especially by their wives as par- or partners, using tunnels as means of access. One of the tunnels is believed to have led to the old still further up the street. Ladies of the night who used to frequent the house were known to chalk prices on the soles of their shoes so as to make a crick a scrape from the law. Upon arrival of the police, the charges could, could easily be erased by simply wiping their feet on the floor. The building is said to by, be haunted by Madame Clark and could be the grain lady who's been spotted on the site. Sounds and footsteps and inexplicable loud bangs have been heard together with voices. Staff have previously reported that they feel as though they were be, being closely watched. Witnesses are said to have had their bottoms pinched, leading some to believe that it is, in fact, a Madame Clark's customers who still frequent the establishment in death. <coughs> the current Prince Albert Public House opened its doors in 1900 and replaced a much earlier watering hole, which had the Royal Commercial Hotel situated upstairs. For many years, the Prince Albert was a public house on the ground floor, and while the hotel was on the upper floors. This was the Royal Royal Commercial Hotel, and from 1911 it had its own separate entrance. In 1999, the Grade 2 listed building started undergoing extensive alterations and refurbishments. The former Royal Hotel part of the building is allegedly haunted by Miss Williams, known to wear a man's suit, smoke a pipe and ride a powerful motorcycle. Following the First World War, Miss Williams had a secret lover by the name of Anna, who was a wren in the Royal Navy. In a bid to keep their relationship a secret, Miss Williams would light a candle in room 13 as a signal of safety for Anna to come to meet her lover. But Anna was tragically killed in a, uh, in a, in a na- traffic accident following her death, uh, uh, the death of Miss Williams too. Her room 13 was locked up and no longer used. Uh, guests have since been woken to a figure standing silently at the bottom of the bed and a candle flickering in the window. The hog's head used to be known as the vine. It's believed there are two ghosts here. One is a train driver called Marba, who was killed during a, uh, in bo- the bombing during World War Two. He is apt to sit quietly at the bar before simply disappearing. Uh, the other ghost here is that of a workman who died when he fell down the cellar steps. His ghost wanders the cellar vainly trying to complete the job he started in his life. Staff often feel as though they are being watched in the cellars and are particularly easy on the, uneasy on the steps where the accident happened. Staff at the Talisman pub believe they caught a spirit on CCTV. They say there can be no other explanation for the strange glowing misty orb that dances in the darkened bar. When barmaids went to investigate, the room was completely empty. A ghostly shape could be linked to the 30-year-old tragedy at the watering hole. Landlord Peter Thacker was drinking with a group of men in the same bar. They tried to rouse a sleeping colleague, only to discover that he died in his sleep. There was a man killed outside on Wild Tree Avenue uh, 13 years ago. Atlantis Nightclub, a former cinema, uh, is home to an entity of... Uh, of, of laughs, um, smashes glasses and sings in the style, style of a cabaret singer. The paranormal activity is said to be centred around a shadowy figure which had been seen flitting around the building along into the night as club goers were leaving. Glasses would get smashed for no reason and the cellar doors used to open and close of their own accord as if someone was passing through them. 
The chilling sounds of laughter and eerie singing can be heard in the cellar. As reported by various members of the staff that used to work on the premises. Whilst from the job centre on Temple Street, strange ghostly singings of where of all the flowers come can sometimes be heard. Paranormal investigators have confirmed this to be Walter Jackson uh, and not Pete Seeger, nor a cabaret singer. At the Express and Star building, a blue odourless mist was said to have filled an office. Some believe the building to be haunted by a small child who fell to their death in a lift shaft. Uh, the Grand Theatre opened its doors in 1894 and still retains a magnificent Victorian facade. The theatre played host to many glittering stars over the years, including a young Charlie Chaplin in 1902. In common with many other theatres, the Grand Theatre is allegedly haunted uh, by at least two ghosts. The mel- most well-known apparition is one of Percy Purdy, He was the manager for some years in the early part of the 20th century and still likes to keep an eye on the productions. He's been seen on numerous occasions, including by one of the cleaners in the auditorium. As she looked at the immaculately dressed gentleman, he simply vanished away in front of her eyes. He's been seen at the end of the day making his way to the old downstairs bar where he liked to pour himself a whisky. Mr Purdy is reputed to be responsible for breaking glasses in the bar area. This seems a little unlikely given his obvious love for the building, so perhaps there's a third entity who's a bit more mischievous. Uh, The second reported ghost at the Grand is not actually seen, but makes her presence felt through the very strong smell of lavender perfume and a distinct chill. She's sometimes known as the Lavender Lady. The lady is often experienced around the stage area and where the story goes that she, she, she was killed in a fall. Stories vary as to who she was and how she came to fall. In one version she fell from the stage and in another from one of the boxes above. Also a bit of a mystery to me is I was sure that the old Vic Hotel would have a ghost story attached to it, which neighbours the Grand, uh, but I can't find any, meaning that it must be one of the few Britannia hotels in the country without a ghost story. A beacon radio, Wolverhampton, West Midlands, is supposed to be haunted, as many, uh, as many presenters have witnessed activity. Ian Perry, back in the 60s and uh, 90s, did a talk show and often witnessed things whilst doing his show. With the age of building, it's not surprising that an old Victorian house, old Victorian three-storey detached house, once home to several generations. The Wolverhampton Ring Road, busy junction with Stafford Street, crosses a medieval area, once known as Four Ashes, and and the ghosts of St Mary's guard this entrance to the vast lane. Graysley Old Hall, Wolverhampton, dates back to the 1300s and is one of the oldest haunted buildings in Wolverhampton. Little is known of the history of Graysley Old Hall until the 16th century, but evidence shows the property was in existence in 1377. In the 17th century, one of Oliver Cromwell's Justice of the Peace lost the ownership of the house as he used it to pay off a gambling debt. Strange and eerie sightings have, and activity have been experienced, which includes items moving and going missing, as well as shadows and rumours of children walking around the house. Mosley Old Hall was one of the places where Charles II hid after his, the ill-fated Battle of Worcester in 1651. He moved here from Boscobel House. The building now belongs to the National Trust and guided tours give a fascinating glimpse into this aspect of the English Civil War. Uh, The isolated lane outside Mosley Old Hall is haunted by ghosts of defeated Scottish soldiers 
returning home from the Battle of Worcester. Uh, they've been heard immediately outside the house, or their presence is, pa- is sensed as they pass along the lane. And Mosley Old Hall was a Catholic house, and a secret chapel upstairs has a very strange atmosphere at times. And many people have felt icy chills up there, and some feel decidedly uneasy until they leave. On occasions, a lady in a period dress has been seen in the chapel, but there's no clue as to who she is. One of the volunteer guides witnessed the heavily weighted chains on the clock in the king's room being moved by unseen hands during a regular tour. On the same tour, the door to the nearby White Greaves room opened and closed by itself. Outside, as she stood in the corridor, the same tour guide had the unnerving experience of feeling an em- entity pass straight through her, which, was, which not surprisingly made her feel quite dizzy. The Wolf of Hampton Banshee has been, been heard, uh, and the howling, uh, heard howling and seen a swirling mist outside the house and instantly that someone felt they were ill or about to pass. Northicott Farm, Wolverhampton, 1651, a representative of the fugitive King Charles, on the run from the Cochin defeat at the Battle of Worcester, dropped in at Wolverhampton's Northicott Farm, appealing for refuge for the King. However, her husband was away from home at the time, possibly fighting in the Civil War, and apparently the, civil's wa- the farmer's wife apparently turned down the request, re- <coughs> resulting in Charles fleeing to Mosley Old Hall. It's said that possibly as a gesture of remorse, the farmer's wife sent an attractive young maid to attend to the king during his brief stay in Wolverhampton. After the dalliance, the maid left Old Hall, Mosley Old Hall, but was never seen again. However, it's not the unfortunate maid who's said to haunt the farm, but rather her grief-stricken lover, a farmhand who died of a broken heart and is set to return to the farm, searching for his lost love. In the summer of 1966, the farmer's site manager was said to be standing in his blue room when his wife complained of feeling cobwebs brushing across his face. The manager looked across to where she was standing and saw what appeared to be a shadow next to his wife, (coughs) but one that didn't move when she did. Checking the room later, he found no cobwebs. Also during a craft where a trader in the parlour claims to have heard footsteps cross the length of the floor above her, closely followed by the sound of somebody falling down. Somewhat concerned, the trader mentioned the sound to a member of staff, who immediately investigated. The stairs leading to the upper floor had been securely closed to prevent members of the public gaining access and there was no sign whatsoever of someone having been in the area. The Old White Rose in Bilston is a 16th century building with extensive cellars. It was in the cellar system early one morning that landlord John Denston clearly witnessed an apparition. At the end of the long disused cellar was a drop, which was convenient for lifting empty barrels up to the ground level. Early one morning in 1998, John clearly saw a figure exit the drop and stand at the end of the cellar. He was wearing old-fashioned and quite scruffy clothes. After standing stock still for a few minutes, starting at his upturned, staring at his upturned palms, the swarthy and unkempt looking man disappeared into a side tunnel. Uh, by this time, John realised it was an apparition and he had seen the side tunnel actually went to nowhere. It was securely bricked up at the end. Uh, the Greyhound and Punch Bowl, also in Bilston, is an ancient pub which has the unusual feature of a tree trunk in the middle of the pub. A number of the figures have been sighted here. A tall man in a black coat, a large black hat, had been seen around the kitchen area. When staff go to investigate further, 
Of course, there is no one there. One member of staff had the unnerving experience of entering the pub to find it full of customers. Unnerving because the pub was closed at the time and they simply all vanished away in front of him. A similar experience occurring one night after closing time when two men were seen talking in the corridor before suddenly disappearing in front of the witnesses. The sound of a baby crying is also heard in the pub sometimes. A local legend has it that the baby is crying for her mother, murdered by a cruel landlord many years ago. Uh, stories about the Beldre ghost vary. Brian Davis said, I can confirm that many people who worked there, he was very real. Uh, some had seen him and a lot had sensed him. He's said to have been the ghost of Herman Bradley, who, who lived on the top floor of the building facing Mount Pleasant. He also wandered around the factory, uh, around the whole factory. I remember that in 1977, a security officer patrolling the factory in the middle of the night saw him emerge out of an old garage. The security officer took off and never came back to work, leaving me as personnel manager to explain to the board of directors that we had no security officer because he'd been frightened by a ghost.